Hey guys, Dan here over Zoom with Tim. Hello, Tim. Hi, everybody. Uh, we are doing sort of a uh, Dan Does Disney special one-off. I don't know what you want to call it, but we are uh, remembering the late Tommy Kirk. He just passed away. Uh, I found out last night. Um, and uh, we're going to put this up before two other videos that we recorded, one of which Tommy Kirk uh, features prominently in The Absent-Minded Professor, yeah. um, which we had recorded a couple of weeks ago. I put it up and then it was all glitchy, so... I think we may uh, end up putting up an audio version of that. And then uh, we also just did uh, The Parent Trap, but he's not in that. So No. Um, but I, I texted Tim immediately when I found out. Tim, I said, we got to have a nice tribute to Tommy Kirk. God knows we've talked about him at length. Yeah. Um, and I, I just picked a random selection of a few classics. He was part of the Shaggy Dog. He was part of the great Swiss Family Robinson. Everyone was in that. Uh, Old Yeller. And this is actually a double with Savage Sam, which he's also in. Uh, and then one that we're going to get to in a little bit, uh, Bon Voyage with Fred McMurray. He's in that apparently as well. Um, and many others. I mean, that's just a few. Yeah. So he's in 11 Disney movies total. We've seen four of them we saw old yeller shaggy dog swiss family robinson and apps mind professor so we still have another seven to go um old yeller was in 57 and then from 59 to 65 in a span of for that seven years he's yeah. in 10 disney movies disney called him his good luck piece at one point um and he's in three, I think the first three Disney sequels. Really? Yeah. Because Savage Sam, Flubber, Savage I guess, Sam. would have been in. Flubber. And then his last two movies is um, The Misadventures of uh, Merlin Jones. And then the year after that, his last Disney movie is The Monkey's Uncle, which is a sequel to merlin jones and he reprises his role as merlin jones wow okay wow so the first three disney sequels and not only that but uh he was also in the hardy boys serial that they did on the mickey mouse club i guess it was or maybe yeah. it was one of the sunday night disney's but um but yeah that's that was i think the start of it and then he got old yeller from that maybe yeah, yeah. Um, he became a disney legend October 9th, 2006, alongside his former co-stars, both um, Tim Considine, who he starred in the Hardy Boys with, and then he did Shaggy Dog with them, and then Kevin Corcoran, who he played his brother five times in movies. He played his brother five different times in the movies. Um, and we've also, agreed that that, that that dynamic works. Yeah. Um, and then also in 2006, um, the Hardy Boys... Um, uh, serial was put onto DVD in the fifth wave of the Disney Treasures collection. Yes, uh, Disney Treasures is how uh, we watched Victory through Air Power. Yeah. Uh, it is how I saw what was the one where they visit the studio? That was a really early one. Um, uh, that, um, Reluctant Dragon. Reluctant Dragon. But that's on Disney Plus, I believe. I, yes, that's yes, now, yes. Now you can see that there, but for a while, for about 15 years, you could only get it on those uh, Disney treasures. So yeah, they released uh, Hardy boys on, on that. Uh, I didn't realize until I was reading about him today that he was gay. Yeah. And that was actually, a little, especially because that's why he stopped working for Disney is because in 63, um, Disney kind of found out about it and then they didn't renew his contract. Um, and then he started quickly working for MGM. They didn't like publicize it, but Disney, um, had personally fired him, but then um, The Misadventures of Merlin Jones was a hit in 64, and that was the last movie that he filmed with Disney, but then Disney was like, we need to make a sequel to this and asked him to reprise his role even after they cut out his contract. Wow, and he did it. What a guy. Yeah, he did. Um, he, yeah, he I mean, look, in the 60s, you couldn't be gay, that's for sure, especially yeah. with a, I mean, Disney is the family-friendly and what's so it's very funny because Disney now is one of the, you know, the most gay friendly uh, companies out there. But yeah, in the 60s, uh, you know, Walt obviously 
was known as the the family brand. Uh, so absolutely, yeah, he couldn't couldn't do that. Yeah, no, it, uh, he he publicly came out in an article in uh, 1973. So for another 10 years, like he wasn't yeah. publicly out, but but still, even 73, that's very early. Yeah. Uh, um, and I know he, he had his a lot of drug issues, uh, which, you know, goes, goes hand in hand with being a young star. And then of course, the, you know, hiding your gayness. So yeah, he had a lot of drug problems, which he, um, sort of talked about in, in later years. Yeah. He, he said that he kind of hit rock bottom in 1970. Um, and then that's when he kind of really left the industry. He kind of did a couple different things after that but not much um and then he completely got off drugs turned his life around um and then he eventually uh started a carpet cleaning business that he owned himself and he ran that for 20 years um so um yeah yeah it's it's weird uh, you know we we think about some of these kids from that era like the 50s 60s uh and really most of them did not spin that success into being adult uh, stars, you know, everybody on Leave It to Beaver and Dennis the Menace and all of these family shows from the 50s and 60s with little kids. Very few of them uh, ended up really in the business. Today, we see that a lot more with the Disney hit factory, people like Zac Efron and Miley Cyrus. And, you know, they grow up sort of in the industry. Yeah, I mean, I think nowadays it's a little bit better. But even when we we're growing up, like in the, the, the 80s and 90s, usually kids actors don't fare well um and it's usually a lot of the time that it is drug issues and stuff like that um so yeah that is very true i i guess i mean yeah i can't think of too many i mean fresh prince kind of but he was already sort of famous before he got the show yeah um, and he was kind of more of a, a teenager anyway it wasn't like he was like a kid kid yeah that's true he was probably 20 or something yeah i, I guess one of the first ones I could think of that had a career post childhood, but they still had a lot of like drug issues and stuff would be Drew Barrymore. Yeah. But still, you know, tons of drug issues. Alyssa Milano, I guess too. But again, she was a little older. Like you said, she's, she was probably 12 or 13 when that show started. She wasn't eight. And th that's the problem of having these kids earn a lot of money as a kid. And and uh, not really know what to do with it. And in uh, Tommy Kirk's situation, he's he's hiding the fact that he's gay. And he, he actually went on and talked about how his childhood was horrible. He hated his childhood because he was trying to be something that he wasn't. Um, so uh, eventually he, he wound up not really having anything. At one point he said he was broken. And that's why he had to really do his, something and turn his life around. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's very sad. But. He did turn it around. And uh, what's real nice is some of these older movies um, have the a lot of the bonus features. And we talk about them in our in our Disney videos. And sometimes uh, there are interviews with both him and Kevin Corcoran uh, as, you know, in their 60s or whatever, um, talking about, you know, the making of the movies. And it's really cool that we have that uh, stuff to look back on. And even though he did, you know, have a hard time with it back then, yeah. it was nice to see that he kind of looked fondly uh, back, you know, 50 years later or whatever. Yeah. And 30 years after Walt said that he was the good luck piece of uh, for him, he still said that that was probably the highest compliment that he ever got from Walt. And he, he looked back fondly on it. Um, and he was able to have a little bit of a successful career after he left Disney. He was in a lot of the beach movies um, with Annette Fonicello, who also left Disney um, for other reasons. Um, she, uh, he co-starred with her a lot of times. Um, so two other frequent co-stars of uh, Tommy Kirk were also Disney legends. Annette Fonicello in 92 was a Disney le legend. And then, of course, Fred McMurray, who became a Disney legend in 87. So he should have been Fred McMurray should have been the first one ever, probably. I mean, 87 <laughs> is pretty early. I don't know when they started doing that. Um, yeah, it was it had to be mid-80s, probably, right? Yeah. So he was, probably, up, but... he was probably one of the first, but I mean it's just because to show how much of a successful career he had with Disney that not only is he a Disney legend, but four of his other frequent co-stars are also Disney legends. 
So had- yeah, well, and it's funny. I mean, we we talk every time about oh, you know, we've talked about this person in such and such a movie and this person, but there's a couple of names that come up pretty much like every other episode, and Tommy Kirk is one of them. Yeah, um, it's him and Kevin McCorkin, uh, really. Yeah, uh, but really, I feel like Tommy Kirk. I'll say that out of the four that I that we've seen so far, his I think his best one is his first one, which is Old Yeller, and then his second best one is Shaggy Dog so far. Yeah, I mean, and he's really I would say the star of those two movies. Obviously, yeah. Old Yeller, it's kind of the dog, I guess, but I mean, it's it's his movie. Yeah. So um, acting rage. Yeah. Well, and a big contrast from that annoying kid from uh, treasure island yeah bobby driscoll bobby driscoll yes which disney publicly sort of you know called uh, a bad actor basically um but yeah so um but look you know i wanted to uh talk about this with you because i've never heard of this person before we started doing these videos no i mean uh neither have i i mean i haven't seen any of these movies prior to this but um even I mentioned it to my wife. I'm like, oh, Tommy Kirk passed away. She's like, who's that? And she's a big fan of like Swiss Family Robinson and um, and Shaggy Dog and things like that. And I'm like, oh, he was in those movies. She's like, oh, that's sad. Um, but she's also not one that remembers names. Um, yeah. But um, I mean, I think this is a name that I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life is Tommy Kirk. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about him so much, and I watched the Shaggy Dog all growing up, and the only one I knew by name was Fred McMurray, um, and that's only because of all the other movies that we had seen. I never saw Old Yeller as a kid, but um, but yeah, this is one that I, I will definitely remember uh, for the rest of my days here. Tommy Kirk, what a, what a kid. You know, it's been nice watching him grow up, and, and the next few movies, I guess he's, he's going to get older and older. He probably... If he goes till 65, he's got to be pushing 17, 18 at that point. I think he was about 21 when he left. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Yeah, because old Yeller, he must have been almost a teenager, and that was 57, like you said. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So he died. Did, uh, did you say what he died of? I didn't look at that part. It, Heart it attack? Said, no, it, it, all it said was that he's been, he's been sick for the last couple of years or so, so not okay. really, really specify what the cause of death was but he's just been a little ill okay well he made it to uh, 79 so you know that's uh, a a good age for somebody that had uh, such a troubled uh you know childhood and young adulthood um but uh yeah we'll, we'll talk about him again many many more times um but i wanted to throw it up now because since since i took down the uh, absent-minded professor video you know, I, I want to point out that we've, you know, filmed that obviously before uh, the passing, which is why we aren't going to be lamenting him in that one. But I guess the next one he's in, we'll, we'll sort of talk a little bit more about, um, you know, how he's no longer with us. It might be Bon Voyage, actually. No, it's uh, end of 61 is uh, Babes in Toyland. The Christmas oh, that's movie. right. That's right. Yep. OK, that'll be a good one. All right. Well, Tim, thanks for coming on. We don't do a ton of. Uh, you know, retrospectives on my channel, but Tommy Kirk seems like a, a big one for the Disney crowd. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't watched any Tommy Kirk, Kirk movies, uh, there are all the ones that we mentioned, uh, Old Yeller, Shaggy Dog, Swiss Family Robinson, and Absent Mind Professor are all on Disney Plus. So you can go and enjoy his, his, his catalog of work there. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to put up, you know how when you log in, they do like the special like tabs that say like, oh, you know, here's the whatever Marvel movies or I don't, it would be very nice if they did a little Tommy Kirk tribute tab. It would be nice, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. I don't think they will, Tim, but <laughs> yeah. all right. Well, we'll see everybody next time. Tim, thanks for joining and uh, see you later. Bye.